Now the green blade riseth from the buried grain. Wheat that in the dark earth many days has lain. Love lives again that with the dead has been. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. In the grave they laid him, love whom men had slain, thinking that never he would wake again, laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. Forth he came at Easter, like the risen grain. He that for three days in the grave had lain, quick from the dead, my risen Lord is seen. Love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. When our hearts are wintry, grieving or in pain, thy touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our heart that dead and bare have been, Love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, good morning, and welcome to this, the Funeral Mass for Paul Healy. And there's just a few wee things I'd like to say, both on my own behalf and on behalf of the family, just before we begin our Mass proper. First of all, I'd like to extend my own condolences, and I suppose much more importantly, those of the people of the parishes here, to you, Liz, to Samantha and Dean, Chloe and Casey, Ava and Aria, and indeed to all Paul's family and friends. Paul Healy was born in Hamilton on Good Friday, the 28th of March, 1964. His parents were Matthew and Annie Healy, and he was the second youngest of seven children. He was educated at St. Joseph's Primary Blantyre and then John Ogilvy High School in Hamilton. Paul made many great childhood friends and indeed many of them became lifelong friends, probably because he had a very attractive personality, always the cheeky chappy, Jack the Lad. He had a great passion for football, both playing and watching, and he would watch any game from kids to professionals. He also tried his hand at golf and judo, but football was his passion. When he left school, he joined the army in the footsteps of his brother John, but Paul really never had the heart for it. He much preferred his time with the co-op, where he made even more friends and enjoyed clubbing and mad holidays. He went on to have Samantha and Dean, who were his world Above everything else, he was a real family man. He joined NAFI in January 1992 at RAF Halton, and there he met Liz. They were married four years later on the 15th of March, 1996. He enjoyed his years of married life, which were marked by numerous holidays. Paul and Liz made amazing friends, and Paul always had a story to tell. In the fullness of time, Samantha and Dean grew up and had their own families. Samantha had two daughters, Chloe and Casey, 
And Dean also had two daughters, Ava and Aria. Paul, needless to say, was a very proud and a very loving granda. He was also a very loving doggy daddy to Susie and Nasha, and this made his life complete as a real family man. He will, of course, be sadly missed by his family, his friends, and by everyone who knew him. So this morning we keep Paul and his family very much in the forefront of our minds and of our prayers as we commend him to the loving care of God. So let's prepare to celebrate our Mass this morning as we always do by coming honestly into God's presence, by recognizing our weaknesses, and by seeking God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most gravest fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant Paul also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding, this is man's grey hairs. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The Lord is my light and my help. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. The Lord is my light and my help. O Lord, hear my voice when I call, have mercy and answer. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. The Lord is my light and my help. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. 
you have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep my remarks short and simple and to the point. Those of you who attend Mass every morning would notice we started a wee bit differently. I actually switched the live streaming on before I put the church lights on, but not before I had lit the church candles. And it was quite deliberate because I wanted those candles as a focus, particularly that candle, the Paschal candle, the symbol of the resurrection. Because that symbol can speak volumes. That is the great symbol of hope. It's a great symbol of Christ's victory over sin and death. Paul, at his baptism, was baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. It's no coincidence that the Paschal candle is beside the font, because that's the eternal symbolism of the resurrection. And at our baptism, we are baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, which means that for the Christian, death is not the end, but eternal life in Christ. And days like today are hard, they're difficult. They force us to look at difficult questions. But there are also occasions for hope, occasions for trust, occasions for trusting the Word of Christ. And that's why, with increasing frequency, I've been using that gospel passage this morning. Because it's that wonderful wee phrase. It's very simple. It's very much to the point. And it really invites us to respond. And it's the reassurance from Christ. In my Father's room, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. If there were not, I should have told you. There's something very blunt, very much to the point, but very reassuring in its simplicity. It's Christ saying, do you think I'm making this up? Do you think this is not true? This is the truth that I'm telling you, and this is the truth that comes from my Father. to whom I am going. And when I go, I'm preparing a place for you so that where I go, you may be too. And that prompts the question, do you believe this?
So once again, we stand before our Heavenly Father, placing all our prayers, all our deepest needs before Him. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, His Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask Him to save all people, living and dead. For Paul, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all Paul's family and friends, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled to pray for Paul, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother Paul. Cleanse him and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Paul may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, 
that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Paul, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. John the Evangelist, St. Thomas, St. Patrick, St. Ninian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And if you're with someone just now, offer them a suitable gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Paul, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, that concludes our Requiem Mass this morning. In a short time, we will commend Paul finally into the hands of God at Cumnock Cemetery. But in the meantime, could I ask you all to keep Paul and his family very much in your prayers at this time. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now and announce the Gospel of the Lord.